Hello there! General Kenobi! And welcome to what is the official second episode of our adaptation series here on the Daz Reviews channel. Though in hindsight, it looks like quite a bunch of old videos kind of fit the bill. Regardless, this is the series that discusses upcoming films that we've already seen produced in other media. It's usually gonna be video games, because of course it is. The modern film industry just loves rehashing stories that we're already familiar with rather than taking risks on something entirely original, and that has become ever more present with gaming. Last time we mentioned the arduous process of the Minecraft movie, and now we're travelling back to the mid-2010s again to another film that joined the wave of announcements back when everyone wanted to jump on that YouTube hype being built up at the time. And since it's October, today we're tackling something a little more spooky. Five Nights at Freddy's. Similarly, with Minecraft, you probably heard about the idea of this movie some time ago, but obviously haven't seen really all that much since. Well, allow me to fill in all those gaps for you. Now, believe it or not, the original Five Nights at Freddy's is now six years old, releasing in the ancient day of 2014, and it's certainly had a popular upbringing since then. Absolutely dominating the internet stage through both its entertaining gameplay or reactions to said gameplay, as well as through its incredibly detailed and puzzling lore. And even as a guy who hates horror himself, I gotta admit, even I fell for all those crazy theories and puzzle pieces and trying to connect all the dots back in the day. Something about the world of FNAF was just addicting and intriguing, and the theories allowed me to completely bypass the jump scare aspect of the horrifying world. And of course, from the perspective of some big wig movie executive, this thing would be sure to just bleed money. Even away from the film, the marketing and merch approach to the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise is absolutely bonkers, with Funko lines and products in all sorts of forms, and even that is somehow inviting. How did they make horror cute? But forgetting all that, there was an old announcement for a Five Nights at Freddy's film, and it's actually still going on today, so let's get into that. The date was April 2015, a whole eight months after the original Five Nights at Freddy's 1, and Warner Brothers officially announced that they had bought the rights to a FNAF movie. But even more crazy to that is the the idea that the franchise had already been met with its first three installments of the game. FNAF 3 released in March 2015, a whole one month before this news. No wonder the series dominated, it was just constantly adding new pieces to the puzzle. That's an insane workload for the sole creator Scott Cawthon. Now of course these are the earliest stages of development, so there's not really an incredible amount of detail floating around from this era, but we did know that the producers would be the likes of Roy Lee, David Katzenberg, and Seth Graham Smith. Don't worry if you don't recognise the names, I don't either. Even if I've mentioned them in the video before, chances are if they're producers or writers or something, it just goes in one ear and out the other. But still, the backlog of film history coming from these producers includes the likes of It, The Lego Movie and The Ring from Roy, incredibly fitting for the horror side of things, Riverdale, Child's Play and It Again from David, and Dark Shadows, The Lego Batman Movie and It once again. This whole first lineup are just straight up the producers of it Chapter 1 and 2, which certainly lends nicely to the idea of a genuinely scary Five Nights at Freddy's. Though horror was not the sole purpose of the movie, as they were said to be excited to collab with Cawthon, quote, to make an insane, terrifying, and weirdly adorable movie. Clearly going for a little bit more of that merch lineup approach of keeping it cute-ish, which you can imagine can be done with some of the extended cast of characters of the FNAF world. And actually, by the time of FNAF 3, there were already like 14 animatronic characters to the total cast list, with the iconic original 5 of course being your basic baseline, but then FNAF 2 introducing Shadow, Freddy and Bonnie, toy versions of Freddy, Bonnie and Chica, Balloon Boy, Mangle and the Puppet, and then finally FNAF 3 giving us Springtrap and technically the Phantom and Withered original animatronics too. And looking at the cutesy side of things, clearly there's the toy line as an option, and Balloon Boy, and Mangle, if you squint your eyes a little bit. However the whole cutesy aspect was gonna go, clearly it was going well. Skip ahead three months to July, and the director had been set up with Gil Kennan, previously known for Poltergeist, Monster House, and writing Ghostbusters Afterlife, which is somewhat in the right direction for this kind of thing. As well as Tyler Burton Smith, previously working on Child's Play Again, Quantum Break, the crazy video game TV hybrid show, and the upcoming Kung Fury 2. 
2, which one, I didn't even know that was in production, and two, is a way more interesting backlog of projects to be given to the co-writer role along Scott himself. They've got a bit of that horror, the sci-fi madness, and then a good backing in comedy if things go well. What an interesting pick for a co-writer for a FNAF story of all things, huh. Though to be fair, as the FNAF games developed over time, good hints of horror and silliness did start seeping its way into the series, so I guess expecting comedy isn't too far off the mark considering where the franchise is going. And hey, if you're liking my stuff so far, you know the drill, do consider subscribing. Holy cow, we've made it to 200,000? Jeez, thanks everybody. Unfortunately, with the way YouTube actually does its things these days, I can't make an outright video sort of asking for thanks or doing a milestone video, but even still, man, that's insane. Thanks everybody, again, I just, ugh, oh, I'm blown away. Only you can help balance out my unsub ratio count, but also I have a full announcement now. Starting on the 30th of October, I'm going to restart streaming on dazradios.twitch.tv and all the rest of it. The plan is we're going to be streaming three times a week, so do please come and join. It's Monday, Tuesday and Friday, starting next Friday, with having IRL slots, uh, variety gaming stream slots, and then movie slots as well. I want to see if I can turn movies into streaming content. It'll be interesting. It could be like live trailers. Here's a whole schedule. I've got it all planned out. We're doing it until the end of 2020. After that, I'll have a break and see if I want to continue it, take it like a trial run. So if you feel like supporting me even more, those are all of your options. Ooh, I didn't mean to cosplay as the puppet, but I have. Rawr. That's the dumbest thing I think I'll ever do on green screen. But while I could speculate about all of these options for days, unfortunately, things just weren't to be. Fast forward a year and a half and things had rapidly changed course, with Corfin in January 2017 stating that due to problems within the industry as a whole, they were met with several delays and roadblocks that essentially has pushed the film back to square one. He then went on to promise that he was to be involved with the movie from day one this time and how that's something extremely important to him, wanting this movie to be something that he's excited for the fan base to see. Now of course it's not really my place to just guess what exactly went wrong with the movie industry as a whole, but it's certainly no secret that the systems in place are a fickle beast to manoeuvre, with them always grasping for the biggest buck in the shortest turnaround to the point where it often crushes the original artistic vision. But despite the major setback, the idea of a FNAF movie was far from dead, more like it was being reanimated from the ground up again, like the mechanics on the inside were still determined to make their own path. And just two months after that last bombshell, Cawthon tweeted out a teasing image of Plumhouse Productions, the new production company working on the project. And with them comes Jason Blum, our new producer, and best known for the likes of all sorts of things, Get Out, Us, Black Klansman, Happy Death Day, all sorts clearly a valuable ally, and he confirmed a little later on that he was excited to be working closely with Scott Cawthon on this. Hopping a couple months later after that, and the original director Kenan announced that they were no longer directing as Warner Brothers 2015 version was completely scrapped, and the new Blumhouse production wouldn't involve him, as one would naturally expect to follow. By February 2018, replacements were cemented, with Chris Columbus set to direct the film working previously on the good Home Alone films, the early Harry Potters, Mrs. Doubt Fire and Rent, and more recently Pixels and other producer roles. Kind of a mixed bag of expectations. And yet, Scott Cawthon and Jason Blum would be producers. By August 2018, Cawthon announced that the first script draft had been completed, and the details of that we do actually know. It was said to involve the events of the first game and opened up the possibility of a second and even third film. More information that I had since found through IMDb described in more detail that this film rendition went as follows. Based on the popular horror video game, a man starts a job working as a night watch security guard at the restaurant Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, where he discovers the animatronics move at night and will kill anyone they see. It's pretty much right on the mark from the premise of the first film, and a pretty simple baseline. None of that over-complex novel series malarkey. With everything seemingly going in the right direction, Blum tweeted out the plans that the film was set for a 2020 release. Totally the reason why I'm making this video now, and not because I only just found out it was still ongoing. <laughs> So with all these plans now moulded together in the year of 2018, the FNAF series was taking itself back to its roots as the core franchise had already begun to spread out enough to
to cover most of what we've seen. By this point, we had FNAF 1, 2, 3, and 4, FNAF World, Sister Location, Pizzeria Simulator, the full trilogy of books, the survival logbook, as well as Ultimate Custom Night 2. By this point, the cast of animatronics and humans was also astronomical, with mysterious protagonists, background murderers, family relatives, implied names, and all sorts of people from the books. FNAF had truly become a worldwide name, and a world that was gigantic enough to fit a story practically everywhere. But with the base of a new adventure ready and set to begin, once again in November of 2018, Cawthon announced that the entire script was scrapped once again, and further delayed. This episode is coming off awfully similar to that of the Minecraft one so far, but trust me, as things continue, we've got some more interesting developments unfolding from other adaptations in the works. But even still, that is the core reason as to why that old 2014 FNAF movie announcement hasn't been making trailers for release this year or the next. As Scott explained it, he had written a script, Jason Blum liked it, and Chris Columbus liked it too, but he does he had a different idea for it, and it was one that he liked better. He takes responsibility for this delay, it is entirely his fault. He's sticking with what he's always said though, that either the right movie gets made, or no movie gets made. He hates delaying a project that's already seen so many delays, but he has to go with his instincts on what he thinks will be exciting and interesting, and what he thinks the fan base will really want to see. If that means he has to start 10 more times over, then that's exactly what he's going to do. The good thing is each attempt gets better and better in his opinion, so despite the delays, it's going in the right direction. Yes, it's still not over now. That full-length feature FNAF film just cannot die. It won't die. It won't. I won't repeat that. The idea may have been scrapped, reanimated through pure mechanical determination, and then eventually abandoned once again, but FNAF just wouldn't let it be over. And with Scott Cawthon, as passionate as he is, and sure that he can tell a better story every time and time again he starts to put pen under paper, the film is alive and moving yet again supposedly better and faster than ever seen before. News on the film had obviously gone silent soon after this 2018 news, but it's 2020 now, and quarantine is in full effect. The film and TV industry may only now be recovering from forcibly social distancing and all that, but writers and work-from-home creators have had time to pump passion into their projects. And Five Nights at Freddy's The Movie is just one of those projects to get some tender loving care during these iconic times. And in June 2020, Blum said that the film is in super active development, and that it's rapidly moving forwards. And though things are looking significantly up compared to previously, he is of course cautious enough to not quite put a timeline on it just yet. But it's there. And it's going. And after all of this two year gap, we've now seen Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted, that's the VR one, Five Nights at Freddy's AR, Special Delivery in Augmented Reality, Freddy in Space 2, because we all have a phase like that now, don't we? There's Fazbear Frights Volume 1 to 5, and then a continuation planned all the way to number 9, as well as Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, the newest game expected towards the end of the year, seemingly set in the 80s with a female protagonist. Though, as I'm writing that, I've only got images to go off of. Though it's very possible you guys have a trailer or a whole game to enjoy at this point. Regardless, after all of this time, the world of FNAF couldn't be bigger, and Scott Cawthon clearly has the sky as the limit for where he wants to tell his next filmic story. Clearly, starting from the base wasn't good enough, but who knows what elements the dude truly wants to expose to us all now. They may not want to put a timeline on it, but there's a good chance that this is making waves far more efficiently than we think. Will it truly capture the hearts of fans everywhere, satisfy every corner of the fanbase, and come out as an overall success? Probably not, at least on satisfying every corner. Theorists will surely overbreak it down, and I can imagine some horror fanatics calling it childish. But really, this film has the potential to be really, really good, or at the very least, very, very interesting. The characters are enjoyable, whether old or new, the world is investing and fun to try to piece together, and the gameplay, I'm sure is fun along the way. I wouldn't know, I'm too busy watching people play it and skipping the jump scares myself. Not a fan of that, really. But the merch? Yeah, somehow that kind of stuff entices me. Weird. But for now, we've just got to continue waiting it out to see what magnum opus idea Scott is brewing over there. At least we've got a new game to help keep us waiting. Just someone else play it for me, alright?
<laughs> My name's been Daz. You didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. <sighs> I did not expect to be talking about FNAF anytime soon. I mean, I know loads of YouTubers did it back in the day, but I just, you know, I lurked and watched and skipped over the jump scares. Oh well. It's an interesting world, I've got to admit. You know, it's mainstream to hate on it, but... I literally didn't actually plan for this costume to look a little bit like the puppet. I mean, I haven't, I mean, I guess I've got a white face, but you know what I mean? I haven't got the, fa the white mask face. Still, <laughs> I only realized it after I put it on and like saw myself in the little camera. Anyway, you don't need to know about this. FNAF! I mean, <laughs> I think I mentioned all I needed to mention. Thank you for sticking all the way to the end of this video. It really helps with my, you know, content. It's video retention time. Algorithm stuff. I appreciate it. I'm sorry I didn't have anything, uh, like, intriguing and mind-twisting at the end. But, you know, thanks for supporting me, you know. Let's go wholesome.